Twas the night before roasting day, when all through the kitchen, not a creature was stirring, not even a pigeon. The char siu was hung over the cooker with care. You know what, this is ridiculous. Let's crack on. The Chinese have been perfecting the method of roasting meats over thousands of years, marinating and cooking them low and slow to create mouth-watering dishes that simply melt in the mouth. I've got a big meat day tomorrow and there's loads to do. For those of you with a squeamish nature, please look away now. This is my belly pork stabber. And the only way to do this, it's with intent. So the reason I'm pricking this belly pork with loads of holes is to ensure that I get a really crispy skin. Um, the more holes, the better. So this may take a few minutes, but I've got to make sure that I pierce the skin only and don't actually penetrate into the meat. Take your time with this. So you can buy one of these from an oriental supermarket. But if you don't have one or you don't live near an oriental supermarket, you can do it with a very, very sharp knife. But again, just be careful that you don't pierce the meat underneath the skin. Oh, and no, I'm only joking. <laughs> this thing is bloody lethal though. Okay, I think that's enough. Right then, the next step, I'm just gonna remove that. I'm gonna turn the pork over so it's now skin side down. And what I've gotta try and do is to marinate the meat side. So we're gonna start off with some Chinese rice wine. Um, if you do this slowly and massage it into the meat, you will get quite a lot of wine in there. But it just, just takes a little bit of time. Just work the meat, even work around the sides because we want to flavour everything. Okay, that'd be enough. Now I have some Chinese five spice. And I'm just gonna sprinkle this all over the back of this pork. And I have some salt, which I do the same. And some, just this is just ground white pepper. So that's gonna add that background heat. So that's spread all over. And now what you need to do is get your fingers in there and gently massage it in with the rice wine along all the sides. and just pat it down. Okay, the next thing I need to do is to wrap the meat side only in silver foil. So I'm gonna take this now and carefully flip it over. Now, we're gonna carefully roll up the sides so it just covers the meat, but it leaves the skin still exposed. Okay, so that's my meat marinated, my skin pricked. So the only way I'm going to achieve a crispy skin is to ensure that this skin is bone dry before we start roasting tomorrow. So I'm gonna grab some kitchen paper and remove all the excess moisture that's on this piece of pork. Um, I just grab my roasting tray. Now, this has to go into the fridge and then we can forget about it at least 12 hours. If you can leave it a bit longer, the better. Right, that's meat number one done. Now on to meat number two. 
Into a large pan with a lid, place the spring onion, rice wine, light soy sauce, five spice, cloves, ginger slices, star anise, cinnamon sticks, brown sugar, stock, and let's not forget a pinch of salt. Mix this well to combine all of those flavors, add the duck legs and make sure they are fully submerged in the liquid. Cover with a lid and place in the fridge overnight or for at least 12 hours. And finally, just a huge hunk of pork to marinate and it's off to bed I go. So there's my large piece of pork shoulder. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mix the marinade into this large saucepan first and then I'll get my hands in and give it a good massage. So we've got some Chinese five spice, which I'm just gonna add into here. That's followed by some yellow bean sauce. And we have some Chinese rice wine, followed by some Chinese barbecue sauce. Um, if you can't get the Chinese barbecue sauce in the tin, you can use the hoisin sauce in a squirty bottle and that will work just as well. And the same goes as well. If you can't find yellow bean sauce, you can just double up on the hoisin sauce. I have some sugar, and this is just white sugar. A couple of pieces of ginger. And just some minced garlic, and it's just roughly minced. And one cinnamon stick. A couple of star anise. And lastly, just a little splodge of honey. Now all of those are in my bowl or saucepan. Now grab a pair of gloves and then what we need to do is just massage these ingredients into the pork. So, now this is just pork shoulder, in this goes. And I'm literally using the pork now just to distribute these ingredients around the pan. and I'm gently massaging all of the marinade into each nook and cranny. Okay, so take my gloves off. This now goes into the fridge for about 12 hours. And finally, that's me done for the night. Mm. In my opinion, no one, and I mean no one, roast belly pork quite like the Chinese. I'm going to show you how to transform this simple cut of meat from, mmm, that's nice, to, oh my God, that's sublime. Belly pork. Got it out of the fridge about an hour ago. I needed it to come back up to room temperature. So let's get roasting. First thing I've got to do, now the skin is nice and dry, is just to give it another pat down. And I'm just gonna very lightly brush this with white vinegar. And I mean light as well. I don't wanna moisten the skin too much. But the vinegar is just gonna help with the salt draw out any excess moisture that's left in there. Okay, so that's just got a very, very light coating of vinegar. Now for the salt. So for the first hour, this is gonna be roasted with a layer of salt. And we're just gonna liberally coat this pork, covering all of the skin. And we've got all that marinade that we spent so long yesterday massaging into that meat. And the salt is gonna protect the skin, but draw out any extra moisture. And there we have it. One coated piece of belly pork ready for the oven. Place into a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for one hour. 
After the first hour of cooking, remove the salt crust and place the pork onto a clean sheet of foil, wrapping the edges again to protect the meat. Leaving the skin exposed, turn the oven up to 220 or even 230 degrees Celsius and place the pork on the top shelf and roast until the skin is bubbling and golden. <laughs> this is looking so damn good. Mm. So at this point, you are going to be tempted to hack off a chunk and pop it in your mouth. But patience is a virtue and you will save yourself from third degree burns because this is red hot. I'm just going to transfer this over onto my wire rack. It needs about half an hour ideally just to cool down slightly before we can chop it and I see if I can get it off the tin foil now. But that meat is trying to fall apart now. Oh, you can hear how crispy it is. And the smell in this kitchen is so amazing. Oh, and we have freedom. Ah, let's get that over to this side. And let me just admire this for a second. Oh, my goodness. So, I don't know if you can hear how crispy that is. So a little chef's tip, because the skin is so crispy on this pork, when I chop it, I'm actually gonna turn it over and cut through the meat side first. So I'm really sorry that I wasn't talking as I was chopping that. It's such a divine moment listening to the juicy meat give way under the heft of my chopper. But that, that amazing sound that the crackling makes as you just push it through. It's one of those moments that has to be savoured. So there's my pork. I'm just going to arrange this beautifully on the plates now. Take your time with this, there's no rush. And I'm just earmarking which piece I'm gonna dive into first. Because what's the point of being the chef if there isn't any chef's perks? Pork, sugar, and a big mouthful. Oh my goodness. There are no words for that. So, three words that's gonna make your belly rumble and your mouth water. Crispy, aromatic, duck. Everyone, and I do mean everyone, loves this dish. It's the perfect sharing plate to be enjoyed with friends and family. This little beauty has been marinating overnight in all that goodness. After the first hour of cooking, remove to a wire rack to drain and cool for 30 minutes. Once the duck has cooled, lightly brush with oil. Transfer to a baking tray and place into a preheated hot oven to roast until crispy and golden brown. Once crispy, remove from the oven, transfer to a serving plate and shred using a fork and spoon. The meat should literally slide off the bones. For the best results, steam your pancakes for six to eight minutes before serving. Did you know the Chinese build with duck, not Lego? And I'm gonna show you how to build one of these lovely pancakes. So, is it hoisin or duck first? The answer is hoisin. Any heathen out there 
putting the hoisting sauce on after they filled it with duck, you're doing it wrong. So on goes the hoisting sauce. And then we need a little bit of juicy meat. And uh, some of this crispy skin, followed by a little bit of cucumber. And for those that like raw spring onion, knock yourselves out. Personally, not for me. <laughs> and my mouth is watering. So are we ready? It's like a train coming into a tunnel. Mm. That's so nice. My take on the classic char siu is a richly aromatic pulled pork shoulder that melts in the mouth and oozes sweet meaty goodness. Now stick that with a steam soft bao, crisp iceberg lettuce and a cool cucumber and I think you're in meaty heaven. Remove your marinated pork shoulder from the fridge at least one hour before cooking to bring it back to room temperature. Pour in one litre of chicken stock and over a medium to high heat, bring it to a rolling boil. Once boiling, turn the heat to low. Place on a lid and cook for a further 90 minutes. Switch the heat off and leaving the lid on, allow the meat to cool in the marinade for 10 to 20 minutes. I, um, I pulled my pork out of the sauce and just allowed it to cool on this plate. And I've skimmed the sauce of the excess fat. Um, so in here I've got all of the star anise, um, the cinnamon sticks and other bits and bobs that went in there. Um, first thing I've got to do is now sieve this into a clean saucepan. So I'll just pop that on there. So I'm just going to sieve the sauce now. Thank okay, you, that'll be fine. And you can see that I've got my star anise, cinnamon, ginger and other bits and bobs in there. Just pop this over here. We now need to bring this to the boil. So this is that rich aromatic barbecue sauce that we get when we go to a Chinese takeaway. Now on to the pork. So this, like I said, this is a pork shoulder. The Chinese like their meat quite fatty, but now we're going to pull it, we can actually eliminate some of this fat. So I'm gonna pop my gloves on for this. Now it's quite important that you're quite methodical with this and don't rush it. Um, I personally don't like too much fat when I'm eating. So we just take the pork and you know what? To make it a little bit easier, I'll move this there and bring this over to the chopping board and you can see what I'm doing. So you can see that there's quite a big chunk of fat there. So I'm just gonna take this piece out and leave this on the plate. And then this is that lovely char siu pork that I'm just gonna pull. And it's worth taking your time with this because the whole eating experience is a lot nicer. So you can see, because we've allowed this pork to sit in that liquid for a good hour and a half, and then I let it sit in there for another 10, 15 minutes, just while it was cooling down before I removed it, it falls apart. Literally, I'm barely touching this and it's so tender. And I'll quickly sift through the bits on the plate just to make sure that I've not left any lean bits on there. And there we have it guys, a lovely bowlful of pulled pork. Now I'll just get rid of my gloves and we can turn our attention back to the sauce, which is now nearly boiling. This is just corn flour and water. And I'm just gonna mix it to make sure that it's well incorporated. The beauty of this sauce as well, is if you don't use it all in this sitting, which I don't think you will, it freezes fantastic. I'm gonna start stirring and I'm gonna start adding my corn flour and water. Now I'm gonna thicken this until it coats the back of the spoon and I can draw a line through the middle and the sauce remains either side of that line. Now if you can just see the back of this spoon, I'm 
I'm just going to draw a line right through the middle. Lovely. And there's my barbecue sauce made. Now, grab another spoon and we'll grab, oh, you know what? I'm going to grab my ladle and I'm just going to take about a cup, half a cup's worth and just pour this over the shredded pork. Give me five minutes and we'll get the bow out and we can build one of these fantastic barbecue pork buns. Now you can make your own bow, but that does take some time. My pork's ready. These are straight from the freezer. You can buy them in your Chinese supermarket and they just steam them for about eight minutes. And we're gonna build one of these lovely soft steam buns. So I'm gonna start off with a little bit of lettuce on the bottom. So this is my version, or well, this is McWan rather than McDonald's. It doesn't really work, does it? So some of this juicy pulled barbecue pork. And I'll rescue that last little bit of lettuce. Some cucumber. And I'm gonna to top mine with a little bit of hoisin, but you can use the barbecue sauce that we thickened earlier. And there we have it, guys. My fully laden pulled pork bao bun. That's now gonna get, well, it's time's up. Let's put it that way. And here we go. I've been lucky enough to sample slow cooked meat from some of the best vendors in Hong Kong. With the right ingredients, a little bit of time, lots of love and attention, you too can be in meaty heaven. Just remember to keep it low and slow.